day, future researchers. Hello to all my grade 7 students and to all the students out there. Mapa grade 7 kaman, grade 8, senior high school, college student. Kumusta kayo? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tim May, your research teacher for today. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Research 7. Last week, what we discussed is all about the frequency distribution and the frequency distribution table. In this lesson vlog, this is the continuation of our discussion in our previous module. So this time, we're going to talk about the measure of central tendency. And this is under the descriptive statistics. What is measure of central tendency? Measure of central tendency for ungrouped data. Measure of central tendency is also referred to as measures of central or central location. It is a summary measure that attempts to describe a whole set of data with a single value that represents the middle or center of its distribution. A single value that attempts to describe a set of data by identifying the central position within that set of data. Sometimes it is called as the measure of central location and it is also called as the summary statistics. Pag sinabi kasi natin measure of central tendency, so kinukuha natin dito yung central location. Ano ba yung gitna? So ano ba yung average nito? Kaya nga tinawag din ito na summary statistics kasi we are referring to the center at ano ba yung middle point kung binigyan kayo ng mga sets of data. And since we are going to talk about the measure of central tendency for ungrouped data, meaning to say, individual scores, yung ating hihimay-himayin para makuha natin yung three main measures of measure of central tendency. Measure of central tendency has three main measures. The mean, the median, and the mode. So what are the differences among these three main measures of measure of central tendency? Okay, simulan natin sa mean. How do we define mean? Okay, yung mean, ang symbol niyan ay ito. Mean, it means average. So, kung mean ka, average ka lang. Oh. Mean, it is also known as the arithmetic mean, most commonly used as a measure of central tendency, and it is used to describe a set of data where the measures cluster or concentrate at a point. The mean can be used for both continuous and discrete numeric data. For example, let's start tayo sa first, which is the mean. Okay, ang symbol ng mean is x bar. Yan. So, pag may nakita kayong ganyan, it means mean. So, tandaan nyo lang yung formula sa pagkuha ng mean, which is mean is equal to summation of x over n. So, ito yung ating mean. And ito naman, Yung summation, ibig sabihin niyan, ia-add natin lahat ng value ng x. Okay? Summation of x, ibig sabihin, sum of all the measure. Okay, itong summation of x. And we have n, ito naman ang ating tinatawag na number of values of x. Ibig sabihin, kung ilan yung x na meron dito. Okay, gusto ko natandaan nyo yung formula na yan. Or, sige, Isulat natin dito sa tabi. Okay, for example, let's say that the grades in research of 5 students are 87, 84, 85, 85, 86. So, what is the mean grade of the 5 students? So, ano yung formula natin? x is equal to summation of x over n. 
So, ibig sabihin, sa mission of X, i-add natin lahat yan. So, ilalagay nyo ay 87 plus divided by sum of all the values. Ilan ba ito? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, divided by 5. So, what is the answer? Okay, the sum of this is 427. So, divided by 5. Okay, mean is equal to 85.4. Okay, meaning to say, that is the mean of this answer. Okay? Next, let us proceed with the second mean measure of measure of central tendency, the median. Okay, ang median, ito naman yung symbol niyan. Or pwede rin ito. Pag sinabi nating median, it refers to the middle point of the scores. So, ibig sabihin, kung binigyan ka ngayon ng scores at pinahanap sa'yo ang middle point niyan or yung median, ibig sabihin, kailangan mo muna siyang i-arrange from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. And then, kung ano yung nasa gitna, yun ang middle point. Yun ang magiging median natin. Median. This is the middle value or term in a set of data arranged according to size and magnitude. It's either increasing or decreasing. The median divides the distribution in half. There are 50, for example, of observations on either side of the median value. In a distribution with an add number of observations, the median value is the middle value. Okay, when it comes to median, madali lang namang hanapin yung median, especially kung yung individual scores ay add number. Kasi yung gitna niyan, automatic, that is your median or that is the middle point of that scores. Pero paano naman kung even numbers yung binigay na sets of data sa inyo? So for example, 8 yung uh, individual scores na yun. So kapag in mo siya from highest to lowest, possibly... Okay, possible na dalawa yung nasa middle point. So, hindi naman pwedeng dalawang numbers yung magiging media natin. So, ano ang gagawin nyo? Ayan, very good. Kukunin natin naman yung average nung dalawang score na yon. So, for example, 85 and 86 yung nasa gitna nung scores na binigay sa inyo. So, 85 plus 85... And then, divided by 2, dahil dalawa lang naman sila, kung ano yung average nun, yun yung magiging median. Example. Median is the middle value. So, ang ating symbol for median, it can be MD or X with this one. So, for example, meron tayo ditong value ng 35, 54, 58, 60, and 97. Okay, alin yung middle? Okay, so para mas madalian kayo, cancel nyo to. Mas cancel nyo rin tong dalawa. So, ano ba yung natira sa gitna? 58. So, ibig sabihin, yung median dyan is 58. So, yan yung sagot. O, di ba? Madali lang. Now, paano naman yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na paano kung hindi siya add numbers yung value? Kagaya nito, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sa 5, alam mo yung gitna, yun yung magiging median. Eh, what if anim yan? So, ibig sabihin, yung gitnang dalawa ang magiging median. Pero, anong gagawin natin doon? Okay, for example, yan. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 10 ngayon yung ating given. Ano ang middle value? So, alam mo na ito ay, okay, ito, dalawang, 7 at saka 8. So, to get the median, so you have to get the average of 7 and 8. So, 7 plus 8 divided by 2. Bakit po divided by 2? Kasi dalawang nga yung naandun sa gitna. So, that is 15 divided by 2. So, we have the median which is 7.5. So, this will be our median. Okay, diba? Ganun lang siya kadali. At kung mapapansin nyo, ina-arrange yan 
from ha lowest to highest. Okay, so dapat naka-arrange siya accordingly. Hindi pwedeng uh, magkakaiba. Hindi pwedeng 5, 7, 8, 6, 5, 9, 10, 9, 10. So, kailangan arrange siya ng tama. And lastly, we have the mode. Okay, mode? Ano nga ba pag sinabing mode? Okay, the symbol for mode is this one. And pwede rin ito. Okay, let us now define mode. Mode. Mode is the most commonly occurring value in a distribution. Measure or value which occurs most frequently in a set of data. It is the value with the greatest frequency. The mode has an advantage over the median and the mean as it can be found for both numerical and categorical or non-numerical data. To find the mode, you have to select the measure that appears most often in the set. If two or more measures appear the same numbers of times, then each of these values is a mode. And if every measure appears the same number of times, then the set of data has no mode. Mode, the most commonly occurring value in a distribution. Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi nating mode, kung sino yung, may, kung sino yung number na may pinakamadaming nag-appear na ganun, ibig sabihin, yun yung mode. Now, let us have the mode. Mode is the measure of value which occurs most frequently in a set of data. So, ang symbol natin dyan is MO or this one. Ngayon na may, meron akong tatlong example dito. For example, number 1, 10, 2, 9, 10, 13, 11, 10. Alin dyan ang mode? Okay, very good. Ilang beses bang nag-appear ang 10? Diba? 1, 2, 3, tatlong beses. Eh, yung 2 ba? Isang beses lang. Yung 9, isang beses lang din. Yung 13 at 11, isang beses lang din. So, alin dyan yung may pinakamaraming beses na nakita mo yung value na yun? So, diba yung number 10? So, ibig sabihin sa example number 1, ang ating mode is 10, okay? At yun ang tinatawag na rule number 1 na select the measure that appears most often in the set. So, number 2, 5, 8, 7, 9, 6, 8, 5. Alin dyan yung uh, pinakamadaming nag-appear ng maraming beses? Okay, so yung 8 ay dalawang beses. Yung 5, dalawang beses din. Yung 7, 9, and 6, isang beses lang. Ano ang mode natin? Okay, very good. So, ang magiging mode natin ay, since parehas silang nag-appear ng madami, okay, so ibig sabihin, each of these values is a mode. So, ibig sabihin, ang mode natin is 5 and 8. Okay, yan. Yan naman yung rule number 2, which says, if two or more measures appear the same number of times, then each of these values is a mode. And for example number 3, 12, 16, 14, 12, 16, 14. Dalawang beses nag-appear ang 12. Dalawang beses din nag-appear ang 16. Dalawang beses din nag-appear ang 14. What is the mode? Lahat po ba ay mode? Okay, very good. Wala po tayong mode dito. Ibig sabihin, none. No mode at all. Why? Yan naman yung nahandun sa rule number 3. If every measure appears the same number of times, then the set of data has no mode. Parang tulad na lang ng example. And 19. Pare-pareha silang nag-appear na iisa lang, tingigisa lang. Meron bang most often dyan? Wala, ba? So, ibig sabihin, itong example na to ay wala ring mode. None. Okay? So, yan lang. This is the end of our lesson vlog about measure of central tendency with ungrouped data. So, in our next lesson vlog, what we're going to discuss is all about still measure of central tendency, but this time, it's all about the group data. So, medyo komplikado kapag group data, pero kayang-kaya niyan. 
So, yung kasunod nating discussion ay magkakaroon siya ng three parts kasi medyo mahaba na i-discuss yung measure of, central, measure of central tendency na mean median mood when it comes to group data. So, I hope you learned something from this vlog. Thank you for listening. See you on my next vlog. Siyempre, kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na ito, huwag kalimutan mag-subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Research One. This is me again, Teacher Dimay. See you on my next vlog. Bye!